guys, I'm here with Robin of Marine Designs, and so she's going to show us the professional way to actually clean a tank. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few things that I think are really great benefits to grabbing to help. One is a couple towels, one for the floor, of course, since you can get water on the floor. Um, a nice size step stool, something tall enough so that you can access your tank without having to stick your arms way, way into the water at all times. Uh, your normal siphons, and maybe a bucket or trash can, depending on how many gallons it works best to clean your tank with. Um, you need a scraper. Uh, something for glass, make sure you use a glass scraper, it will make the job a lot easier. Or an acrylic if you have an acrylic tank. It's probably the best tool that I've ever had and the greatest tool in the world, a toothbrush. A toothbrush. A okay. toothbrush works yeah, the we best. don't have a toothbrush, but I mean maybe you can look at this as a, a oversized a toothbrush. This is yes. what I normally use. Okay, great. I like the toothbrushes for the uh, silicone corners for most tanks because a lot of times you get a lot of algae on the silicone. It's also your power heads they work great. They fit in all the little small crevices. First okay. thing I do, I always, again, like to place a towel on the floor because I'm in some, someone else's home. It will protect your floor and uh, all those little things that end up falling down. And then I always like to have a spare towel, again, uh, for my hands because once you get your hands wet, it seems that they make a complete mess all over the floor. I have a stool here because I am a girl and I'm a little short. Oh, you're not the only one. <laughs> So the very first thing when I normally clean the tank, I actually clean the glass first. The main reason behind this is because you're releasing a huge amount of algae spores in the water. And to do the water change, you want to pull out all those extra organics. So it allows me to make all of those organics free floating in order for me to get the majority of them out. It's also a lot easier to clean the glass when the tank is clear and you can see all those little imperfections. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab the scraper. And with the scraper, again, this is a this particular one is a glass tank, so you can use the stainless steel blade. It works really nice. Um, you will have to probably replace this occasionally because they can get bent, the corners get bent. But most of the time, if you keep it nice and flat um, and you rinse it off, it won't. Uh, you'll get a lot more life out of it. So the very first thing I do again is I just like to clean the glass. If you kind of use a 45 degree angle on the glass and you just take the scraper up and down throughout the entire glass, it should come nice and clean. When you use the mag float again, you just want to make sure that you stay away from that bottom area in order to make sure that the sand does not get in it. Because this magnet is strong and if a piece of sand gets in there and you go like this against your tank, a lot of times it will scratch. So you can always just use this up to about maybe an inch off. And then when you get ready to clean, you can always just go with the actual scraper and scrape along the bottom in order to prevent that to happen. So what I do when I siphon the tank, uh, two things to think about. If you're on a sewer system, you can always take the water and flush it right down the commode, which is always nice and convenient. If you're on a septic tank though, you never want to put salt water down in your septic tank because the bacteria in the salt water can actually kill the good bacteria in your septic tank and cause it to go bad. Another important um, tidbit to remember too, when you start siphoning, your pump's probably still on. So either you need to turn the pumps on before, or you need to make sure that you're aware of how much you've siphoned out before you turn the pumps off. I like to actually start the siphon with the pumps on the reason being is because a lot of people like they have smaller sumps. It tends to, when you turn it off, backflow a little bit. It allows me never to flood anybody's house. Buy a siphon from your local store. Most of them work great. The longer the tube, the taller the tank, the easier it is for you. When you start a siphon, there's two ways. You can either use my mouth, start the siphon with my mouth, or you can always put the siphon directly into the tank. You can fill the siphon up with water, pinch the hose, put the siphon back in the water and normally we'll start from using gravity. When you siphon, a trick to the trade of it is not to get sand through the hose. What I like to do is I like to hold one siphon in the, the tube in one hand and I use my left hand and I use my finger and what I actually do is pinch the tubing. That way the sand goes up into the tube and gets all of the detritus out but if you pinch this, when you're doing it, the sand will fall back down. So it's just kind of a little bit of a trick 
so that you don't siphon your sand out of your tank. I'm cleaning our when you clean your skimmer, best thing for you to use, again, a toothbrush. Um, some of these acrylic skimmer to our, uh, tops are actually very sharp. I have sliced quite a few fingers on it. But you just want to clean it nice and good. Make sure the majority of the stuff is out. Like new. The cleaner these are, the better they actually skim. When you have an extra amount of film here in this neck part, it does not allow the bubbles, which is what the skimmer is using to extract the proteins out of the water, it does not allow it to work as efficiently. I actually use safe and easy spray to actually clean the glass on my tank. The outside, it works very well. It's by API. Remember to hit that like button below. Also hit that subscribe button. This is Thomas with Thomas Vision Reef. And keep enjoying the ultimate hobby.